Bonjour mes amis, hi guys, today we look at quite literally two Grail watches. Uh, these are the uh, Grail watch number two, Frank Muller Sport Chronograph uh, Limited Editions, uh, 50 pieces uh, each and uh, also celebrating uh, 30 years of uh, the brand uh, Frank Muller. So what are these? Uh, these came out uh, on my birthday actually, 18th of November 2022 and I really wanted to buy them. Uh, the price was a bit out of range uh, for me. So uh, Grail Watch is a company created by uh, Waco. Uh, Waco, the founder of the magazine Revolution and uh, the Rake. And uh, Grail Watch aims at uh, approaching watchmaking companies uh, to make a twist on the current model or in this case a reissue a past uh, favorite. So uh, Frank Miller, why? So Frank Miller was a great watchmaker, is still a great watchmaker, and uh, in the early 90s uh, decided to go uh, independent. Uh, so he learned his craft uh, working with, working with uh, Patek Philippe uh, for the, the museum and for their uh, complications, and he dubbed himself the master of complications. Early 90s, uh, the market was just re-emerging from the quartz crisis, very different, and uh, Italy was an important market, and a distributor or retailer asked uh, Frank Muller if he could um, do some chronographs for him, uh, referencing the uh, famous Patek uh, Tasti Tondi with the rounded pushers, the reference uh, 1463, and uh, the uh, earlier reference uh, 130, so those classic beautiful chronographs. And uh, Frank Muller created uh, 50 pieces uh, with different uh, dial configurations uh, in uh, black, in uh, silvery, uh, tri compacts or three sub dials, or bi compacts, two sub dials uh, with an uh, oversized crown and those rounded pushers. Uh, the case was quite a bit uh, different than the, the 1463 uh, Patek, uh, covering more of the uh, underbelly, as I would say, so a larger uh, mid case, while the, uh, the Patek had a very uh, thin mid case with those rounded uh, end of the, the lugs. Uh, if you want that type of case exactly, I think uh, Furlon Marie does a very affordable version. Uh, of it, uh, adhering to that code. I think uh, Frank Muller wanted to have a sportier watch and it's called indeed uh, Sport Chronograph uh, Limited. And um, yeah, there were different ones. Some of them had the uh, oversized Bregan Marvel, some uh, a bit more like uh, what we have here, uh, more uh, in tune with uh, the size of the watch. So the watches were, I think, 37 millimeters. Uh, I think the, the, the Patek 1463 was the 36. And um, yeah, just uh, 50 of them uh, were made and uh, they came and then th they were forgotten. And uh, recently uh, we've seen a revival uh, of interest for this, uh, this look. As I mentioned, uh, Full on Married is a very great version, a very affordable version uh, of it. And uh, a collected man in particular, uh, also Amsterdam watches, uh, did some uh, nice uh, write-ups about those, uh, th those watches and uh, sold some of them and uh, the prices have uh, obviously uh, risen and they are difficult to, to find. Uh, these are not to be confused with uh, what uh, Roger Dubuis, another top watchmaker, also a collaborator of Patek Philippe, uh, did. Roger Dubuis, a bit later, did uh, precious metal versions of uh, and call them the homage, so literal homages to the, the Patek Philippe uh, classic chronographs. And he would use the same Le Mania base that Patek would use, the 2310 column wheel. Uh, what uh, Frank Muller used is a, a, a movement that you will recognize if you have the Sapphire Sandwich uh, Omega Speedmaster. It is the uh, Le Mania 1874 or 1873, uh, which is uh, cam based rather than uh, having a column wheel, so less refined, but a lot less uh, expensive to, to produce and you can produce uh, bigger numbers and tons of chronographs, tons of companies have used uh, this, uh, this chronograph. Uh, not so much now because uh, Le Mania became integrated to the Swatch Group and I think uh, 
the Lemania manufacturer survives as a uh, Breguet uh, manufacturer now. Uh, so you, you don't see this available anymore. So people will reach out to uh, La Joux Perret for their chronographs and uh, probably use a Valjoux uh, base. Uh, but anyway, uh, at the time, uh, this is what uh, Frank Mueller uh, used. And uh, you can see in the certificate he would issue that uh, he, he would mention uh, the, the finishing quality that he uh, brought to the to the watch uh, so maybe not the same uh, level as the at, was what uh, Roger Dubuis did or what obviously Pateg Vacheron did with the 2310 uh, but uh, the um, apart from the, the column wheel uh, it's still very much the same style of, style of architecture for the for the movement for the wheels it's very um, uh, very similar so uh, these watches uh, here, um, Waco approached uh, Frank Mueller, which is, uh, I mean, although the watchmaker doesn't work there anymore, uh, he's still a brand ambassador, I believe. I think now he lives in uh, Thailand, so you might be able to have a drink with him in uh, Pattaya. Um, and uh, now the, the brand makes those, uh, you know, fun, uh, exceptional watches. Uh, Frank Miller was a rock star watchmaker and his watches were in big demands, the colorful watches, interesting complications. Um, and then, you know, he left, uh, he left the brand, but uh, still now it's a beautiful maison. They have a beautiful setup there uh, in Switzerland and Waco went there and asked them, uh, hey, uh, what about those watches? Uh, could you maybe do uh, something for me that would be my grail? Um, and uh, they went to the back and they found that they still have new old stock uh, Le Mania 1873 calibers and they said we can do a uh, hundred of them uh, for you and we can also do uh, the Valjoux 7750 based double sided uh, chronograph so they decided to do a 50, uh, 50 of each and so here we have a uh, one of 50 of the, the black uh, dial version with the tri-compacts and one of 50 of the silvery dial uh, version I uh, hope to be able to show you uh, the, the double-sided chronograph. That's the one I really, really wanted. Uh, but these two here are just so beautiful, so compelling. So it's not an exact replica. They increased the size to 39 millimeter to make it a bit more uh, modern. The case is fully brushed to be a bit more sporty, uh, I, I suppose, uh, why the original ones were um, polished uh, cases. Uh, the, the movement, uh, I think, l l looks good. It's uh, still very comparable to the uh, Omega Speedy. Uh, it's difficult to judge the quality of the, the finishing, but it is well finished. It, uh, it's quite uh, resplendent, uh, I, I would say. And um, what they did is they disassembled the movement. I think Waco just very shortly talked about it in his presentation video. I think uh, he says they disassembled, cleaned, uh, refinished everything. Uh, I imagine what they had was the the Ebauche, uh, Le Mania, and uh, so there was work to to do, and uh, put it back together and uh, made sure that they would run uh, very well. And um, yeah, they, there were some little changes uh, to the, the sub dials, make them uh, more readable, a bit larger, and of course they added those uh, beautiful uh, flute uh, the, the floating finish to the tasty tony pushers the rounded pushers which is a nice touch you have the signature on the the crown which is large and i really like that uh, the dials have a pebbly texture a frosted texture a grenet finish as it is called uh, the, the silver version has the blued hands and, and i like also the uh, around the dial you have a, a a different uh, shade of the of silver as well uh, almost bluish uh, very very nice and you have those a uh, brigade numeral wall some of the uh, original uh, frank Mueller sport chronographs had a uh, oversized uh, 12 uh, some some didn't a uh, bit more uh, homogeneous uh, type of uh, look and that's what we we have here so the mid case uh, yeah fairly fairly large um yeah they come with a uh, leather straps, simple, uh, simple buckle. And so uh, Backwatch Department offers them at, uh, at a much better, much more agreeable price, around 30% uh, less than the uh, original price of around $20,000, which, you know, of course, not, there's not many of them. So it was pricing the exclusivity, uh, the story for, for sure. 
And uh, who could blame them? Uh, they sold out uh, right away. Now the market is changing. Uh, I see some of these here and there available at, uh, at a better price. I think Backwatch Department here offers them at a, a very, very fair price for what you get. Of course, if you compare to the price of a Speedmaster that has uh, the, the same movement, you might say, well, it's still a lot. You don't get a, a, a bracelet. But then again, you get it made by uh, Frank Mueller. Uh, and uh, there's the, the, the whole backstory to, to it, and I find them uh, extremely endearing. And between uh, you and me, if I could um, afford it right now, I would definitely uh, grab one of them. But hey, there's school fees to, to pay, and, uh, <laughs> and, and the rent here in Hong Kong doesn't get any, any cheaper. But anyway, I, I feel very blessed that I'm able to, uh, to handle these a little bit, to show them to you and to explain a bit the, the backstory and I'd love to hear your, your feedback. Uh, what do you think uh, these uh, will be worth maybe in 20 years? It's interesting. It's, it's difficult to say really well what it is, right? Uh, there are only 50 made uh, some 30 years ago and now again only 50 of, uh, of each uh, made. Maybe in 20 years they will be extremely uh, sought after. They are sought after right now. And for a good reason, uh, it, it is uh, quite uh, a compelling, uh, compelling watch. And I'm glad that I could present them to you thanks to Backwatch uh, Department. Links in the description if you're interested to purchase uh, one of them, add them to your collection. Um, really uh, very, very cool watches. And congrats to uh, Waco for managing to... Uh, make Frank Mueller reissue those watches. Sometimes I pass by the, their big flagship store here in Central and just have a little peek to see uh, what they're doing. And they have those very uh, extravagant uh, looking uh, watches. And, and really Frank Mueller was, uh, if you look at the designs now of, um, of Richard Mill, uh, it, it is pretty much the same as what they were doing uh, before. And, uh, and now uh, I think they have their segment uh, still of the of the market. It's not exactly what uh, I prefer. Uh, always so I have a little look to see if they don't make something a bit uh, more like uh, they they used to do there uh, for the uh, Italian market. But um, yeah, it's cool that uh, they were able to to do these and um, yeah. Very cool watches. Uh, looking forward to your comment. If you like this video, give it uh, a like. And I'll speak to you in the next one. Take care, guys.